Hi everyone, I hope you guys are doing really well this week. Um, so today, this week, I'm going to be talking about uh, using your God-given gifts. Uh, it's a topic I'm really passionate about. I get to do a lot of discipleship and a lot of teaching. Um, and a lot of that is focused on helping people identify their gifts and then find ways of how to use those gifts. Um, so like I said, it's something I have a lot of experience in, I'm very passionate about, and hopefully have a lot of fun stories to share around the scriptures we're going to be reading this week. Um, but with that being said, we'll go ahead and dive into his word um, and start start off. Uh, so we're going to start off in Matthew chapter 14, uh, verses 13 through 21. Um, and this is the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Some of you might be familiar with this story. Um, so when Jesus heard what had happened... He withdrew by, bro by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot for, from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it is already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We only ha we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, yeah. and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. So I really love a really a good, rich main point that God brought to my heart as, I, as I'm speaking to you tonight. But there are two kind of sub points that I really want to point out. So I really like in verse 14, um, where it says, When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed the sick. So it takes compassion to pra practice our gifts, to exercise our gifts. You know, it's it's so easy, especially in the very fast-paced world we live in, to and very self-centered world, to be like, oh, well, I have too much work. Um, you know, I, I have to, you know, I have to do school. I have to, you know, have a social life. I have to work out. I have to to read. I have to do this, that, and the other. But it takes compassion to look at someone and be like, no, I have so much to do. But how much more should I sacrifice for this other person? Should I be compassionate towards them and give them love? Um, so that's a, that's a good some point. Sub point, also a really funny, well, kind of funny point that kind of convicted me as I was reading, wasn't even planning about talking about this. I like in verse 15 where um, the disciples say, send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. That really convicted me of how often do I try to tell Jesus what to do instead of asking Jesus what I should do, right? Like, I try to be like, oh, no, this, this seems too complicated. This seems too difficult. We should probably just take the safe route, the easy route. That's something I know I do way too often. Um, because that's human nature. That's our tendency. That's that's the, the fleshly desire he's trying to take out of us, trying to crucify within us. Um, and what I really like about this whole thing, I was in a Bible study with um, Jeff Alston, if you know Jeff. Um, great, great man of God, very on fire for Christ, and a lot of biblical wisdom. And he asked me something of what I thought of, the, or he asked the group, what, what, it, what do we thought of the phrase, give God your best and trust him with the rest. And I sat there and thought for a minute, sat with God, and God brought this to mind. And I said, you know, it's kind of like the parable of the, five, the, of the feeding of the 5,000. We give God what we have, and we trust him and his grace to sustain, sustain us. And I think that's so great because how often does that happen in our lives? How often do we have inadequate humanness? Does God give us an incredible task that seems unfathomable for our small humanness? And how often does he supply the grace that takes us from that the where we are to where we need to be to complete that task? I know I definitely saw that. And what I like about that is there's, there's that process. He takes us through that process. And it is a process. It's a process of growing closer to him. Um, when I started out, like, teaching Bible studies and things like that and biblical teaching was not great. Um, I was really, I don't know, it just it wasn't very pastoral. I wasn't very, of like, investing in lives of people. I was just kind of reading out a book and teaching. 
Um, and so I had a lot of friends who kind of suffered through that with me. Um, thank you for all who did that. And God really worked within me to show me to become more of him and less of myself. I think I was relying very heavily on myself in the beginning. Um, so that's what I, what I like about this is making God the center, making God the, the source of our, our, our ability, because without him, we are nothing apart from him and apart from his love, we're nothing, um, which I really like. I really love that idea. And it's something that I constantly convict myself of. I was actually talking to some of my friends, um, at one of my small groups. And I was like, that's something God really convicted me of today. As, I, as I'm getting very busy over the summer and involved in a lot of ministries, I'm like, I want to make sure that I'm not idolizing ministry, that I'm not putting my worth in what I'm doing, but that I'm putting my worth in who I'm doing it for, because I'm doing it for God. And that I'm doing it, I'm doing it to serve his children, not because I love who they are, but because I love whose they are. And I think that's just something that, that God really convicted me of that's really important. Um, and th it really hit me as I was talking about this today. I was like, that actually lines up perfectly with what I'm planning on talking tonight. Um, but I think so often we get focused on ourselves. We're like, well, I'm not good enough to do this. And the truth is none of us are good enough to do this without him. Um, so I would just say, if, if you're struggling with this idea of gifts, focus on who he is and pursue him. Don't focus on who you are. Um, because we're, we're all broken. We're all in need of God's love and God's grace. Um, and that's another another thing that we're, we're going to kind of get in the next one. We see the widow make a very intentional choice. Um, and it takes intentionality to follow God. We have to pursue him in order to know him well enough to know his will for our life and our lives. And we really have to to like pursue him, but pursue him above other things. To allow him to crucify our flesh day in and day out. To pursue him more than we pursue worldly success. More than we pursue lust. More than we pursue money, status. Um, we, it's, really, it's really easy to kind of wrap those things up. And, and have a watered down gospel that's, that's part Jesus, part the world. But only a pure, true gospel will save us and pur purge us of our iniquities. So with that being said, and I just said a lot, um, we'll move on to the widow's offering, which is a really, a really cool um, passage. So it's Mark um, 12 verses 41 through 44. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money in the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins, worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They gave out, they gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. That was just a really cool passage God brought to my heart that I think we don't often teach with the idea of like spiritual gifts. But what I like about it is so often I think we discredit ourselves, right? I think, like I said, there's kind of the two poles. You, you either put yourself, your identity is an I do A, B, and C, so I'm so great, instead of I do A, B, and C because Christ is great in me. But we also kind of have that tendency, like I was saying, to be like, well, I'm not good enough. To, be, to, to discredit our gifts, to be like, well, and to fall into the sin of comparison, to be like, well, this person's doing this, this, and this, so, so how can I be good? How can I ever be like this person who has a seminary degree, who preaches like, who preaches wonderfully, who has thousands of followers? And again, we lose sight of God. We lose sight of Christ, which is the center of what we do and the only thing that truly, truly matters. Without that, everything we do is nothing. But I think so, too, so often, like when you're put in a position, we don't want to accept things from people who are less. Um, and I had a great experience with this in, uh, one, uh, again, another one, that, that same small group I was talking about before, um, where I had kind of confessed something that I was going through and was really processing through with God. And uh, my friend Bennett, who, who kind of helped co-lead that with me, was like, so who wants to keep Toby accountable with this? And one of my friends like hopped right on it. He was like, I'd love to keep Toby accountable and praying for this. Um, and 
what really made this great was kind of the backdrop of the situation that was going on, my, on in my life, which I was actually the one that he was keeping me accountable and praying for. And it, he was someone who was going through a lot in life, was really kind of in a valley, was struggling with a lot of things. Um, um, and yeah, was just really going through a tough time. And was probably less mature in his faith than I was. And kind of, again, I, I was going through a, a, an interesting situation. And, and I was like, I, I love that he that he volunteered for this in his in his spiritual poverty that he would he would do this for me. Um, but I was like, wow, how easily could I have been like, well, he's not mature enough. Well, he's going through this and this. He's not good enough to tell me what I should do with my life. Because we live in a very, again, self-centered culture where it's like, well, it is my, 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 my life. But the truth is what this word says is that everything is God's, that my life is no, no longer my own. It's God's life. And furthermore, if we go into Romans where it talks about how we are a body of Christ, not only do we belong to God, but we belong to one another. We're created to serve one another and ultimately serve God. So I just thought that was a really crazy moment where I was like, wow, like I could have so easily pointed out like his weaknesses to make myself feel better. But instead I was able to humbly accept that accountability that I needed in that moment um, and grow closer to God because of it. And that's not something I can boast about. That is God working in me to crucify my flesh, my pride and replace it with humbleness and help me more intentionally and more fully reflect the love of Christ and the character of Christ. Um, so I thought that was a really cool story that's, that's tied into this. And again, like I said, it's, I, I there, there are like a lot of examples of that. There are a lot of, of people I have who I'm lucky enough to work with where they, they've come and looked at me and be like, oh, well, I didn't do this or I don't have the right like degree for this. And I'm like, no, I'm like, that's God. God is stronger than a degree. God transcends that. Like if you have God's spirit within you and the people who I said this to, I know they do. I'm like, I know God can do it. Trust in him, not in this world, not in who this world says you can be, but trust in and who he says you are, which is is forgiven, loved, his made in his image, um, and able to do anything with the faith of a mustard seed, not because of who you are, but because of who is within you. Um, and then, so the last scriptures, I have two. Um, so the first one is Romans uh, 6. Uh, Romans 12, uh, verses 6 through 8. If I can find it. There we go. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is uh, prophesy prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. I like the, the first starting out of this, the first part of this verse, where it says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to us, to given to each of us. I like that it starts out. That's why I actually switched this last minute. This The title of this sermon was supposed to be using your gifts, but I put using your God-given gifts, right? Because it's not there, it's not something I have, it's something God gives me. And it's not something to be used for my benefit, but for his glory. We don't love the gifts, we love the giver, right? We, we don't love that I can preach well. I love that I love the one who taught me to preach well, which is God through his Holy Spirit. Um, and again, I like this because... I think so often we kind of pigeonhole ourselves into like the this set of, of gifts. We think, well, oh, well, I have to either be good at, at prophesying or teaching. I have to be good at, at one of these. And this does a really good job of capturing it. But I think we just think, well, teaching is just is, is just this. It's just sitting and it's just it's just talking. But there are like so many good gifts that you can have. Um that you can use use to serve. Um, I think so often right, we try to we try to look at God and we try to be like, well, teach me how to preach that way. Teach me how to preach like like my pastor. Um, but maybe that's not what God's calling you to do. I, I think so often we try to to force ourselves into these gifts instead of saying, God, what have you already given me that you want me to use to serve? 
couple of great examples of this. Um, one of my friends led a small group centered on basketball because he really loves basketball. Um, one of my friends does a lot of like how to connect with God through painting. And we were talking about that at one of my small groups. And I was like, I was like, you know, I was like, it could be so easy for me to be like, well, I don't paint like him. And he could be like, oh, well, I don't preach like Toby. But it's like, no, no, you're doing something. You're doing what God gave you. And that that serves a purpose in the kingdom. And what I do serves a purpose in the kingdom. Neither of us are better. Neither of us, neither, we both need God just the same. We're both covered by God's grace just the same. And empowered by his Holy Spirit just the same. Um, and with, and like, like one of the people I was saying before who was like, oh, I don't have the right degree and things like that. We had, came up with this like great idea where he's like, well, I have a farm and I'd love to have people come and really see like what farming was like because so many parables um, are related to farming because that was a very like agrarian agriculture based society. Um, and I was like, that's super cool. That's something I never would have thought of. That's something I obviously don't have the skill set to do. Um, and I'm like, that's really cool. Um, that's, that's reaching a set of people that I couldn't reach with my gifts. Um, so I think that's, that's another thing too, is not, not creating this, this box for yourself, not putting God in a box, which we so often do really trusting God, not wanting to be the traditional view of, of teaching, view of, of prophesying, view of encouraging. Do it however you want to do it. Not however you want to do it, but however God calls you to do it. Um, I use the good example of, I do a lot of technology for ministries. Traditionally, computers, social media, you probably don't think of ministry. You probably don't think of God. You probably think of very ungodly things, but that's something where God's led me. That's something that, that God has allowed me to do. Um, and it was something that was a very spur of the moment thing, which I think happens too. Um, if you're still looking for what gift God wants you you to really work on or what how he wants you to serve with it, if someone comes to you with an opportunity, obviously pray about it, but I, I wouldn't hesitate to take a leap of faith in that. Um, I, always, I was laughing with my pastor and the, the rest of our communications team the other Sunday when it was like the way it started out is, is I was, was volunteering uh, at our local resource council, like right when the pandemic started. Uh, my pastor called, I picked up the, or I, he texted me. I, I read the text and it said, I'm not panicking yet, but I need your help. And I was like, first of all, appreciated that he was humble enough to ask for help. Second of all, I was kind of like, don't know what I can do. Um, but through God's grace, we have figured it out over a long period of time. Um, and that's another thing too, like don't give up on your gift because it doesn't do great the first time. Like I was saying with my example of Bible study and with technology, did not work out the first time, usually doesn't. Um, you usually just kind of fail forward. One of the things I like to say um, is Jesus wants progress over perfection because he knows, he knows we're not perfect. He came to die for us because we're not perfect. And that's something that I think is really great. And then I'll just read really quickly um, 1 Peter uh, 4.10. Ooh, I think I went too far. One second. Might be 1 Peter 2.10. Do-do-do. But anyway, sorry, the, the verse in 1 Peter uh, basically says the same thing. It talks about um, basically just using God with, with the different gifts that he's given you, um, with the grace that he has given you. Um, so I hope, that, I hope that really helps. If you have any other questions about identifying your gifts, because that's something I didn't really um, hit on too heavily, and then obviously using your gifts um, to serve God and to serve others, I'm more than happy to answer them. Any questions you have, always free uh, for you to, to DM me, to text me, call me. Anything like that, always glad to talk about uh, things like that. Um, so with that being said, I'll go ahead and close this out in prayer and let you guys head out. Father God, I thank you for this time, Lord. I thank you for this time that we were able to listen to your Holy Spirit, that we were able to really discern how to use our gifts. You, you give us so many gifts uh, along such a large spectrum and I just, first of all, want to thank you for that, that you, that you give us this, that you could use the rocks to spread the gospel, but you choose us. And that's such a humbling and loving thought, Lord. 
I just ask, Lord, that that we don't hide that gift. Um, at the idea of the parable of the talents that we don't we don't hoard those gifts. We don't just use them for our own selfish gain, but that we would put ourselves out there. Would put ourselves in places where we have to trust you because it's one of the best places to be. We would take those leaps of faith and serve you. We would not see ourselves as as the world sees us. We would not see ourselves as as the world sees us, like I said, we wouldn't define ourselves by worldly status, by worldly attainments and things like that, but that we would know that spiritual attainment, spiritual power is the most important thing. That we serve and live by the authority of the Holy Spirit alone. And that is the only one that matters, the one that you give us, God. So God, I just thank you for this person on the other side of the screen, Lord, who took time out of their day to, to hear you speak through me on this, Lord to really have curiosity about this, to seek you through through this, Lord. God, I just pray whatever you, whatever they need, Lord, that you would give it to them, whether they need help identifying their gifts, whether they need help seeing themselves as you see them so they even think that they have something worthy, God, that they would know that they'd be ju- that they are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the Son of the living God, Lord. God, that if it's someone who is still looking and discerning on how to how to best serve with the gifts they have, Lord, that you would just give them wisdom on that, Lord. And that those of us who are are serving using the gifts that you've given us, Lord, that you would just protect them from any sort of spiritual attack, Lord. That you would protect them and sustain them. You would help them to not let their serving become an idol but that their serving would remind them so much more of how much they need you, that we would not rely on ourselves, but we would rely on you, God. And with that being said, God, I really just want to thank you. I want to thank you for your presence. I want to thank you for doing so much through us. Um, and really just want to say all that um, in the sweet and holy name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys. Um, I realized part of the way through the prayer, I had not talked about the songs I picked out. Um, so I'll just give a quick rundown of that and then let you guys go. So first one I picked is One Awkward Moment by Casting Crowns. Um, I really like this because it talks about um, just that idea of we feel that awkwardness, right? Like, uh, well, I'm about to step out in faith and do this new spiritual gift. I'm going to start teaching this Bible study. I'm going to witness this person. That's what it is centered around. But I think it applies to so many different gifts. Um, what if I'm not qualified for this? I don't have enough experience. I don't have enough this. And it basically talks about what if it's just one step to change a life? If it's one step um, and that person gets to know Jesus who transforms their life. So it's really talks about the idea of how much God loves obedience and the impact that your small step can have on someone's entire life. Um, again, that's kind of echoed by the idea of unspoken, um, one step by unspoken. Um, again, talks about this really vulnerable kind of experience where this guy stepped out um, and got free from addiction, um, which is obviously a really beautiful thing. Praise Jesus for that. Praise God. Um, but again, it talks about that thing of, you know, coming to terms with like your own sinfulness, stepping out. Um, and again, just the power of taking that one step. Um, finally, Steal My Show by Toby Mac. I love this song. Um because it, it, there's this really good line. Let me see if I can remember it and, and hit it correctly. Um, where it's it's something to the effect of, um, but all we really need is you. Um, and it, it, it talks about how like everybody's there for like smoke and lights and everyone's there for a good show. But without God, it's nothing. Um, that's something I really convict, convict myself of. You know, when I do things like this, um, obviously people watch this for good biblical instruction, um, good teaching, um, but not for me. You know, I'm just a vessel for God's Holy Spirit. Um, and so that's something that I, I try to convict myself of. Like, God, steal my show. It's all for you. It's not for me. Um, and again, like I said, just really guard my heart against that idea of idolatry of ministry. Um, so those are the songs I picked out for you guys. And again, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you guys have a good evening and a good rest of your week. Um, bye.